Let's go. Hello, my name is Lance Zurich, and I am the product manager for the Fisher Tech. <laughs> I'm the product manager for the Fisher Technic division over here at Studica. And today I'm going to provide you with an overview of the Fisher Technic Education Robotic Competition set. Now, this set is designed to provide students with the tools and background needed for participating in robotic competitions. And this is whether at the local level or even large scale national and international competitions, things like the RoboCup Junior. Now, more than that, this set was also designed to enable educators to provide students with a project based standards focused curriculum program involving inquiry design and problem solving. Now, the curriculum for this set, like the curriculum for Fisher Technic's two other curriculum focused project based sets, those being STEM prep and STEM engineering, which are the focus of their own webinar presentation, were created especially for Fisher Technic by noted educator and STEM expert Tom White. So, on that note, So what is STEM? Well, most educators are well aware that the term STEM is an acronym, the letters of which stand for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, if you're involved in any aspect of education, you probably can't open your email box without seeing STEM highlighted in the subject of at least one of your daily messages. And you certainly can't read an educational journal or visit an educational conference without being bombarded by references to STEM. That's assuming you can visit an educational conference maybe next year. But the reason for this is, of course, quite simple. To quote the bipartisan Congressional STEM Education Caucus and their report on the importance of STEM education, STEM education is necessary because it helps to provide the scientists and engineers needed for future development, provides the future workforce with the skills required of a high-tech world, and it builds a foundation for scientifically literate voters and citizens. Now, as such, STEM education can really be considered a matter of national security. On every level, the world around us is changing at a frantic pace. STEM education, it could be argued, enables us both as individuals and as a nation to understand and keep up with these rapid changes in technology, changes which in turn are altering the demands and the scope of industry. And obviously, if we as a nation are to keep our stature and position on the world stage, this requires us to keep pace with the rapid developments occurring all around the globe where countries such as China and India are making major investments in state-of-the-art infrastructure. And while all of this is well and good, and we should, of course, all strive to be good citizens, many students might also ask, so what's in it for me? Why do I want to study engineering? Or why do I want to study coding? Or what have you? So let's consider what it means on the individual level. First off, a few years back, the United States Department of Commerce released a set of projections for the decade that was leading up to 2018. Now, at the time, these, pro these projections indicated that STEM occupations were expected to grow by 17%, compared with just 9.8% growth for all other occupations. Now, while they didn't get the final, final numbers, in March of 2017, the Office of the Chief Economist did release a STEM Jobs 2017 update, which took a look at how these numbers were playing out up until the end of the year 2015, with three years still left in the initial projection. And what they found was that while the projected STEM growth up to that point, once again, just the end of 2015, was a bit less than they were expecting to reach overall by the end of 2018, meaning that in this case, they had reached 14% growth as opposed to, of course, the full 17% they were expecting to see. Comparatively, the actual growth for non-STEM jobs, which again was expected to reach 9.8%, had at that point only reached a fraction of that, 1.7%, which is of course a stark difference. Now here's another statistic I like to share that should give anyone entering the job market of the future pause. And it comes from J.D. Chesloff in his Education Week article from March of 2013. To quote Mr. Chesloff, across the country, across all occupations, there are 3.6 people for every one job. In STEM fields, there is one person for every 1.9 jobs. Employers can't find the talent to fill these jobs, which is even more surprising, considering the US Census Bureau re recently reported that the median salary for engineering majors was the highest of any profession, end quote. Now, as Chesloff goes on in the article to state, quote again, supply is low and demand is high. There is a mismatch between projected future jobs requiring STEM skills and the projected supply of qualified workers to fill them. End quote. 
Now, going back to the STEM jobs 2017 update released by the US Department of Commerce, which I referenced a couple slides ago, here are three key points mentioned in this report that are well worth keeping in mind when considering the importance of STEM education to the worker. Key point one, STEM workers command higher wages earning on average 28% more than their non-STEM counterparts in 2015. Key point two, relates to the fact that many graduates with STEM skills may not always end up in what are strictly considered to be classic STEM jobs. And by this, we mean things like being a scientist or being an engineer or what have you. To quote the report again, STEM degree holders enjoy higher earnings regardless of whether they work in STEM or non-STEM occupations, end quote. Now, along this line, there was a video I saw a little while back on YouTube, and it was posted by the Women's Forum for the Economy and Society. And the title of that video, in a way I thought, really summed up things nicely. And the title of the video was, Every Company is a Tech Company. And essentially, what students want to keep in mind, and what I took from it, from it personally, is that whatever a company makes, whatever a company sells, or whatever service it performs, at some point in the process, STEM skills are required to help that company fulfill their mission. Going back to the report, key point number three relates to job growth. Quote, employment in STEM occupations grew much faster than employment in non-STEM occupations over the last decade, 24.4% versus 4% respectively. And STEM occupations are projected to continue to grow by 8.9% from 2014 to 2024, compared to just 6.4% growth for non-STEM occupations. The trick for educators is to find methods for getting students involved with STEM, and in particular, getting them involved with the most highly in-demand technology-focused skill areas. And these would be things like, again, engineering and coding, and to do so in a way that engages students' interests and creativity, but while at the same time developing the work habits, the way of approaching problems, and the skills that they will need to draw on as they move forward in their careers, both academic and in their working lives. Now, most experts agree that one of the most effective methods for teaching STEM is by providing exercises where certain results are going to occur and students have to discover why they occurred or where students have to find a way to achieve a specific outcome. So how do they do this? Well, they do this through experimentation, through research and through trial and error activities. In short, they find the answers to these questions through the use of hands-on project-based learning. And that brings us to the focus of this webinar, the Fisher Technic Robotic Competition Set. This set is one of three different standards focused project based sets currently available from Fisher Technic. The other two sets, the STEM prep and the STEM engineering sets, are the subject of another webinar presentation. So we, of course, won't delve into those too deeply here, but instead, we're going to focus on the robotics competition set. In any case, each of these three sets has been designed to provide a guided project-based learning experience complete with detailed curriculum, all using the unique Fisher Technic building system. So that might beg the question, what exactly is Fisher Technic? Well, to provide you with a little bit of background, Fisher Technic is a flexible and innovative construction system. Now, unlike other popular construction sets where they're designed to simply stack, the Fisher Technic system was created with more of an engineering mindset. And what I mean by that is that the core building block is unique and that it allows attachment from all six sides. And because of this, it, almost, it allows for almost limitless design possibilities. Now, many of the parts used in the system are designed to slide together and lock in place using a tongue and groove assembly method. And the hundreds of very specific parts that are available will help you to address equally specific design needs. Fisher Technic was originally developed back in 1964 by German inventor Arthur Fischer, who's noted for countless innovations used in both the construction and the automotive industries. Now, Mr. Fischer, at the time of his death in 2016, had held more patents in his name than Thomas Alva Edison had amassed during his own lifetime. Now, besides Fischer Technik, Mr. Fischer was the inventor of synchronized flash photography, and that was back in 1949. And he was also the creator of the expanding nylon wall plug, which almost all of us have used, where you use a, a one of these in conjunction with a screw or a bolt to help anchor heavy objects to walls. Now his company, the Fisher Group, 
employs thousands of workers worldwide, and they produce many variations of fastening devices besides the, the wall plug that are used in building construction, as well as various components used in the automotive industry. Now, they also provide consulting services in regards to high-end manufacturing processes. I'd also like to mention that Fisher Technic was the very first construction set that offered students the ability to build and program their own robots, and that was using the original pre-Macintosh era Apple computers like you see on the screen now. Now, almost since its inception, Fisher Technic has been used by middle schools, high schools, colleges, and universities all around the globe to explore STEM-related concepts, things like robotics, renewable energy, mechanics, optics, physics, pneumatics, and much more. Fisher Technic has also been used by numerous companies, companies like Porsche, Daimler Chrysler, BMW, just to name drop a few, for industrial simulation and training purposes. Now, in addition to this, over the last several years, Fisher Technic's line of pre-assembled simulation models have also found wide adoption for demonstrating and exploring the world of IoT, of course, also known as the Internet of Things, where industrial processes can be monitored and controlled from the cloud. Now, as such, more than just being something that students are only going to use for a year or two in their development, you can really think of Fisher Technic as being designed so that students can grow along with it. As students progress through their academic careers, they can also progress through the levels of Fisher Technic education solutions which are available. The Fisher Technic Robotics Competition Set is designed to provide educators with a clear and detailed pathway for exploring the subjects of robotics and coding through the focus of learning on how to create mobile robotic models for use in a competition setting. The set itself is designed for use by teams of two to up to four students at a time. It contains 670 components, all of which come packaged in a sturdy plastic retinal storage box like you see on the screen now. The set is designed to provide all the materials that you're going to need. By that, we mean both the physical and the instructional materials, everything you're going to need to enable teachers to offer a complete standards aligned curriculum based competition focused class or after school activity. The curriculum used with the robotics competition set was created especially for Fisher Technic by a man named Tom White. Now, Tom is a noted educator who's been involved in STEM since the 1970s, designing programs for educational institutions and for industry. In fact, as an expert in hardware and software integration, Tom was pivotal in introducing CAD, CAM, control systems, digital control, additive manufacturing, and other such topics to the classroom. Now, currently, Tom is the Director of Technology for STEM Curriculum at the globally recognized industrial manufacturing company, Siemens. Now, this is not the first time that Tom White has created curriculum around Fisher Technic. Besides, of course, also being the creator of the curriculum used in our elementary focus introduction to STEM series, as well as the long form curriculum used in the other two sets I mentioned before, STEM prep and STEM engineering designed for middle and high school. Tom has also incorporated Fisher Technic and many of the educational programs that he's designed over the years for schools and uh, other institutions. Now, Tom has often said that he believes that Fisher Technic is the ideal construction set for any kind of engineering-based curriculum program, and he shared several reasons for that. First, he really likes the fact that the materials can be used and reused. Things that are built can be taken apart and reassembled easily into something completely different. He also likes the versatility of Fisher Technic and the fact that it offers so much more economy than purchasing, let's say, an expensive piece of equipment, for example, something like a robotic arm, which might only be used for a few experiments or projects and then put on a shelf to gather dust until the next semester's class. He also appreciates that the Fisher Technic system, with its wide assortment of very specific mechanical and structural parts and components, offers almost limitless creative opportunities for engineering students. Now, when Tom White designed the curriculum for our three project-based learning sets, he had several goals in mind. First, based upon his observation that various types of teachers have different strong points, for example, he sometimes told me that he sees his own strong point more as being the creator of curriculum such as this, more so than let's say conducting a lecture himself. Now with this in mind, he focused on creating detailed curriculum that would provide a broad foundation of tools for all types of teachers to be successful in providing this class so that they could instead focus on the needs of the students. He made sure to include special tutorial sections right at the beginning to familiarize new users with how the unique Fisher Technic system works. And he made sure that each section of the curriculum clearly spells out how everything will be addressed in that specific unit. 
In short, he designed the curriculum and selected the components included in each set to essentially act as a turnkey solution that would provide everything teachers should need to deliver the material effectively in one place. Again, the curriculum was designed to provide a clear roadmap for both the students and the teachers. The goal was also to enable teachers to provide students with engaging curriculum-based projects that had an authentic objective in solving real-world problems and which contain embedded academics. Now, the detailed curriculum with this set, if followed, provides the basis for what could be a standalone project-based robotics class or an ongoing after-school activity. Under this project-focused model, students are told upfront what they're going to need to learn and understand. They're given a real-world scenario where they will take on the role of a professional working on a team, which has been presented with a design challenge that they must devise a solution to. And they are then provided with different tools and different pathways to help them achieve this goal. Now, among other things, students must report, perform research, and that's research both inside and outside of class, and they have to learn the documentation process. And this includes things like creating a design brief or maintaining a digital engineering journal. And they're also going to collect data. They're going to learn firsthand how data acquisition works. They're going to learn how to process data, how to put data into graphs and other formats, and so on. Students are given a technical literacy task driven by the project. Fulfilling this task will require them to gain the knowledge and the tools needed to address it through research and exploration. Students will perform a series of specially designed and enabling activities through which they will acquire the necessary science, math, and tech-based skills. They will devise solutions to their tasks and create prototypes, again, using the advanced Fisher Technic modeling system. Students will then create and install the programs needed to control their prototypes. They will document every step of the entire project. And at the conclusion of every project unit, each group of students will be required to perform, or excuse me, to formally present their findings, including a demonstration of the prototype and if there's programming, the programming in action. The curriculum itself comes in the form of a 576 page downloadable PDF document. This document, which we will explore shortly, contains detailed academic material for use in a classroom or after school setting, as well as full color step-by-step -step assembly instructions for building a series of 20 different models. These assembly instructions are included both as part of the PDF documentation and also in a physical printed form in each set. Now, as many educators and students might be new to the Fisher Technic building system, once again, the curriculum PDF also includes a helpful tutorial section at the beginning to help both teachers and students to quickly get up to speed with using the system. The section covers such areas as how to identify the various parts of available and being used, learning how they fit together, and even assembling a basic model. The curriculum itself is divided into four main project themes. The project themes or units focus on competitions, programming, sensing and vision systems, and mobile robotics. The curriculum as a whole is designed to provide enough academic materials to cover approximately 70 hours. Now, according to program creator Tom White, there is room here, wiggle room, for educators to be more flexible with using this. As he pointed out to me recently, a teacher could, for example, leave some things out and use this to fill approximately half a semester, let's say, assuming a daily class period of 50 minutes a day, five days a week, or if they wish they could add some hours of experimentation and easily bring it up to 90 hours or so, once again, if they chose to. During the course of the four project themes, various activities were also addressed and various subjects are touched upon, including such things as sketching, schematics, Ohm's Law and Power, an introduction to using the RoboPro software, which is the control software used with these models, an introduction to using the TXT controller, which is, of course, the controller for these models. Working with flowcharts, open loop and closed loop programming, digital branching, edge triggered versus le level triggered, logic gates, combinational logic, analog branching, variables, data, sensors such as the digital switch and the digital photo transistor, as well as the digital trail follower, analog sensors, including the NTC resistor, the photo cell LDR, the color sensor, and the ultrasonic distance sensor. An introduction to using the camera attachment, using the camera to detect motion, performing color detection, 
creating a ball finder, which is using the swiveling camera to locate the ball, working with the line tool and the encoder motors and building the control panel. Now, I would also like to point out that the curriculum for the Fisher Technic Robotic Competition Set has also been designed to address some of the most widely recognized academic standards, which are currently in place in the United States. And this includes the college and career readiness standards for math, science, reading, and writing, the NSES content standards for technological literacy, the ISTE standards, and the next generation science standards. Now at this point, let's look briefly at some of the actual physical materials which are included in the robotics competition set. Now, as I mentioned previously, each set contains 670 parts components. And this includes a license of RoboPro graphic programming software for Windows-based computers. It includes the powerful and compact Robotics TXT controller, which has a full color touchscreen, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, programmable sounds, and much more. And also a Fisher Technic rechargeable AccuSet battery pack and charging unit for powering all the models. Among the other specialized components includes a gyro sensor, which is available only in this set, two encoder motors, a USB camera attachment for building robots using a vision system and vision system capabilities, uh, a photo transistor, an XS motor, two push button switches, a color sensor, an NTC resistor, two LEDs, three ultrasonic distance sensors, an IR trail sensor, a photo resistor, a read contact, and of course, hundreds of other parts of all types, all packed in a sturdy Grant Mills storage box. Now the set also includes printed materials such as the full color 74 page pictorial assembly manual with instructions for building seven, di seven different stationary and 13 mobile robotic models for a total of 20 models in all. Also included is a printed sample track and a side fence for a soccer robot. Essentially, even if one chose to ignore the standards-based curriculum, you could still view this as the ultimate Fisher Technic mobile robotics set. The contents of this one box will allow you to build all the models found in both the Fisher Technic Robotics TXT Advanced set and the Robo TXT Explorer set. Again, everything students will need to build all 20 models addressed in these sets is included here. And that means the programming software again, the controller, the power supply, and of course, all of the parts needed. Now, as I mentioned several times, the set will allow you to build 20 different robotic models. We're going to take a quick look at each of these models. But before we do, I just want to note that these are not the only models you can build with this set. In fact, each of the four project themes that are being explored in the curriculum will really only make use of these models as, at best, a reference point and instead will require students to design and build their own original models that are being designed to solve the core problem that's put forth in each of these units. Now that all being said, again, this one set will still include all of the parts required as well as the detailed step-by-step -step instructions for building each of these models we're going to see, which can be studied and experimented on with their, on their, or experimented on, on their own, or used to help students to explore and understand the concept that they're going to draw on for their own unique projects. You're gonna see we have things like an automated ventilating fan, a temperature control robot, an automated hand dryer, a traffic light simulation, an automated parking barrier, a swiveling security camera with an alarm, the cameraman, the basic mobile robot, the hindrance detector, the hindrance detector with a camera attachment, a trail searcher, the detection robot, the soccer robot with movement control, the soccer robot where the camera is mounted right on the robot itself, the basic tracked model, a trail searcher, the tunnel robot, the color detector, an explorer robot, a rescue robot, now, as, at this point, let's turn our attention to the curriculum itself. Now, as we've already established the themes and the concepts the robotics competition set is going to help you address in the classroom, what we're going to do now is take a look at how the curriculum itself is structured. Each of the four project themes focused on the curriculum for the robotics competition set contains a roadmap of sorts where each of the following elements are addressed. The purpose, 
the concepts, the student deliverables, assessment and evaluation materials, an outline, standards, an authentic project scenario, the daily teaching plan, supporting activities, and resources. Right now on your screen, you see the table of contents for the robotics competition set curriculum. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is that the section right at the beginning, as I mentioned before, which is designed to help new users of the Fisher Technic system to quickly get up to speed. Again, the core building blocks used in the Fisher Technic system are designed to attach from all six sides. And many of the other parts are designed for very specific purposes. Now, is this is gonna be a little different than the simple stacking construction of a lot of other building sets that you or your students may be familiar with. We've included this section right up front to help increase your comfort with the system and to allow both you and your students to get the most from the building experience. For example, there's a section showing how the parts fit together and discussing the pin and groove assembly method used. A section showing you how to, you how to identify the various different parts used from the core building blocks to more specialized parts, things like clip axles, girders, rivets, angle pieces, and much more. And for those educators who are new to conducting a class of this type, and it is a little bit different, there is a chapter specifically discussing project-based STEM education. Now, after this introductory section, we have four theme units, which I introduced earlier in the presentation. Again, these are competitions, programming, sensing and vision systems, and mobile robotics. Now in the following slides, I'm going to share some examples taken from these four theme units to show examples of how they address the structural format that I just touched upon a few slides back. Each theme unit will start off with a section outlining the purpose of the project to be addressed in that particular unit. Now, this is the section that spells out for students a clear answer to the eternal question, which is of course, why are we doing this? Why are we studying this? as well as what skills we hope to develop. Now, in the example shown here on the screen, this is taken from a unit on programming, the focus will be on students designing and implementing a program to control an automated system. This is followed next up by a section that lists the concepts to be addressed in that particular unit. And these can be thought of as the big ideas that students should learn from this unit that will be useful and vital for them to understand and know not only in completing their projects, of course, but also things that they're going to draw upon as they move forward in STEM fields of study and hopefully STEM related careers. Now this particular section, which you see on your screen is taken from the unit on competitions. And in this case provides an overview of some of the areas students will begin to learn about and explore here, such as things like control statements, linkages, mechanisms, automated systems, sketching, and much more. Next up is the outline which is found in three of the four themed units. Now here it's spelled out more specifically what is going to be covered in the particular unit. Now the example picture here is again taken from the unit on programming. And so in this case, we'll see things listed such as documenting programs, working with object blocks, Boolean mathematics, loops, branching, data, and so on. Next up, we enter the section where each of the specific standards to be met by each particular project unit is spelled out, which of course provides the educational justification for the project uh, being explored. Now we often get asked if our curriculum-based programs meet the standards for a particular state or district. And while of course we would love to be able to state that they do with 50 states and so many districts, each of which addresses things in a different manner, uh, being able to clearly align to any of these individual standards, of course, isn't really practical or feasible. So instead, what we've done is we've selected the most universally accepted standards, which are currently in place in education in the United States. And this includes the college and career readiness math standards, which are followed by the reading standards for literacy and history and social studies, as well as the writing standards for literacy and history, social studies, science, and technical subjects. Next, we have science standards, beginning with the NSES content standards for K to 12. That's followed by the standards for technological literacy and the ISTE Technology Foundation standards for students. Next is the assessment section with links to both general course rubrics, as well as rubrics related to that specific theme unit. 
Next up, we have the essential question. And this can be thought of as the major idea that's going to be explored in this particular unit. In this example, taken from the unit focused on sensing and vision systems, the question put forth is how do automated devices sense and operate in the world around them? Now the student scenario for each unit, which is next up, gives the students an opportunity to explore in that particular unit's essential question. This is done in the form of a real world problem that students are given to solve. And it's again, it provides an answer to that, where will we ever use this? Well, in this case, they get a real world scenario that they can see the application of these things. In this particular example, students are told that they are part of a technical sales team working for an alarm company. And we're gonna quote from the scenario now, quote, your company has been trying to increase sales to the museum alarm manufacturers. The decision has been made that sales could increase if there was a web page created that had a section for each sensor, a description of how it works, and a sample alarm circuit that others could use to base designs from. You will have to build a prototype of the situation your alarm will monitor and list conditions you will monitor. A section on suggested calibration is also necessary. Your team has been charged with this project. Your team will brainstorm what the web page should contain and how it should be laid out. Your team will conduct internet research to discover how sensors work, what other companies do to create data sheets, and how to create simple web pages using Microsoft Office. Once the research is done and the enabling activities are completed, the team will design their sections for the web page. Any software created for the web pages should be documented completely so another team can easily figure out the work you have done. All work should be documented in the engineering notebook. Students will devise alarm circuits utilizing at least three methods. Each sensor will have a page in the manual and the sample alarm circuit should explain how each sensor works and sees things others do not. Students will present their online files along with a presentation of their prototype in hopes of landing a sales contract, end quote. Now in another scenario put forth in the programming theme unit, the student groups will be tasked with designing and building an ele elevator they'll need to function in a particular method, such as, for example, how it's going to respond to a call button being pushed on, uh, let's say a middle floor while the elevator is maybe located, or excuse me, uh, a call button being pushed on an upper or lower floor while the elevator is located on a middle floor, creating a protocol for where does the elevator go to first, things of that nature. Now, each student group will be tasked in this case with designing a programming protocol for how that elevator is going to navigate such occurrences. And again, the fictional client's requirements are clearly spelled out and the students will be required to create a program to address these specific needs, as I just mentioned. And then they're also gonna to have to create a physical prototype using the Fisher Technic components, in this case, building a little elevator. And then they have to prepare a presentation for their clients and show how this, a demonstration of how this prototype and the program would work in action. After this, we have the daily plan. And this clearly spells out the expectations as students work through the project in the student scenario. Each day of the daily plan is designed to act as a guideline or a roadmap to spell out specifically what the students are going to look at today and what everyone is going to need to accomplish. Now you will see that as different concepts are addressed, students are provided with helpful links which will give them more information. For example, they're gonna have links showing them what's going to be required in the design brief I keep mentioning, or for example, an engineering journal. Once again, each day has a different task to be addressed, a different activity to perform, or a different question to answer. Now in the example you see on your screen right now, again, taken from the unit on programming, on day seven, there is a discussion topic that's put forth, which is how does my dishwasher know when the dishes are clean? Which of course, the dishwasher doesn't know or understand when dishes are clean, but instead it's programmed a certain way to go through certain cycles for a specific period of time. So in this scenario, the teacher will lead a discussion where this, these ideas can be explored further. Now, other things covered in this particular unit on programming, again, will include things like how data is taken from a sensor and recorded, or how files can be taken from the RoboPro programming software format, put into an Excel format to be worked on, and then put back into the RoboPro format, and so on. Now, as students work through the daily plan and on their answers to each of these student scenarios, 
they are going to be required to perform research. This is, of course, going to require a lot of trial and error experimentation. And again, they have to document the entire process. And this means maintaining a design notebook and an engineering journal. Again, they're going to design and build a working prototype using Fisher Technic and also create and deliver a presentation of this prototype in action. The curriculum is designed so that each day in the project theme builds on the one before, and each activity is subsequently more complex and along the way provides the information they're going to need to draw on to successfully complete their project. Now, this really helps to reinforce the concepts for students and ties everything together in an organic and meaningful manner. There is also a section at the end of each theme unit with additional materials being collected. And this can include things like vocabulary words, links to carefully vetted web-based resources, Word documents, PDF files, and PowerPoints. Now, once again, each of the four project theme units follow the same structures we've just seen, including the standards, the rubrics, the daily plan, the resource materials and links, and so on. Now there is also a section at the end of each unit where various additional materials are collected. Oh, excuse me. Whoop. Jumping ahead over here on you. So there's a section where all these links are collected at the end on specific topics and they're all collected in this one section at the end of the robotic competition set curriculum. And this includes links on sketching, schematic drawings, Ohm's law and power, an introduction worth work to working with the RoboPro programming software and becoming familiar with the TXT controller, working with flowcharts, open loop and closed loop programming, digital branching, logic levels and programming and triggering, logic gates, combinational logic, analog branching, variables, data, sensors such as the digital switch and the digital photo transistor and the digital trail follower. Next, we move on to analog sensors such as the NTC resistor, the photocell LDR, the color sensor, and the ultrasonic distance sensor. There's an introduction to using the camera attachment, using the camera to detect motion, color detection, using the swiveling camera as a ball finder, learning how to have the robotic models follow a line path, learning how an encoder motor allows for precise control of movements and building the control panel. And as documenting the entire process is a major focus of the curriculum, there is another section included at the end of the curriculum that spells out the proper procedures for record keeping of this sort. And this is designed to help students to develop proper work habits and embeds technical literacy into the projects. For example, there will be a section highlighting the requirements for maintaining a digital or a, an engineering notebook, the elements that make up the design process are outlined, examples of design documentation are discussed, the problem statement is explained, including its components, the vision statement, the issue statement, and the method statement. Points to be summarized in a design brief are discussed. The elements of testing protocol are outlined. And finally, the required components for an engineering report are also clearly outlined. After this, this is followed by a section collecting the step-by-step -step assembly instructions for each of the 20 models, which as I mentioned before, are also included in a printed version inside the set themselves. And that is everything you get and everything you can explore with the Fisher Technic Robotics Competition Set. So just to summarize, the Fisher Technic Robotic Competition Set contains everything you're gonna need. All of the parts, the RoboPro graphic programming software, the compact and powerful Robotics TXT controller, the rechargeable AccuSet battery pack and charging unit, all the step-by-step -step assembly instructions for building 20 different instructional models and a complete and highly detailed day-by-day -day curriculum. And the curriculum included in each set is yours to use this year, next year, and for many years to come. 
There are no additional fees. There are no subscription charges associated with this. Everything you need is included. And each set is designed for use by teams of two to four students at a time. So it's easily scalable. Using that as an example, a classroom of 20 students could use as many as 10 sets or as few as five sets, depending upon your budget and how quickly you want students to move through the material. Obviously, if you have more students working on a particular project, they're going to go through it a little bit quicker. Again, it's all reusable. Students can build a model, perform the experiments, take it apart and build another. And of course, if you ever do need or want any odd parts or replacement pieces, they can be purchased individually in whatever quantity you choose or need directly from the Studica website. Again, the Fisher Technic Robotic Competition Set is designed to make it easy for educators from any background to offer a hands-on project-based learning experience to their students. And again, this is what experts agree is one of the most effective methods known for teaching STEM concepts such as robotics. Pricing on these sets start, starts at just $699 per set. And of course, quantity pricing for classrooms is available upon request from us. So at this point, I am going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, unlike the slide says, I will not open up the phone line because that always gets for the people who are on the phone connection or on an audio connection on your computer, it can get a little garbled sometimes. So instead I would ask that we use the chat window or the question and answer window. So if you do have any questions, comments, what have you, uh, you can type in either of those. They're both located on the Zoom toolbar. You'll see icons for each of those and you can open them up. Uh, the other option, as you already see my email address up there, if you do have any questions about anything I've discussed, anything I haven't discussed, anything you possibly came in late and missed, uh, you can email me directly. My email address, of course, being Lance Z. My first name, Lance. My last name, Zurich. All you need is the Z. So L-A-N-C-E-Z at Studica, S-T-U-D-I-C-A dot com. So if you do have any questions, what have you, you can feel free to email me. If you didn't need a quote or what have you, you can email me as well. And uh, I would either handle it myself or one of the other dedicated educational representatives over here will be in touch with you. So as I do not see any questions coming up, I am going to move it right along here to thank you for attending. Again, if you would like to get more information, request a quote, or if you'd like to speak with your dedicated educational representative, you can call us directly. In the United States, our number is 888-561-7521. If you are located in Canada, you can call us at 800-561-7520, both of course, toll-free numbers. You also have our URL there. If you'd like to visit our webpage, studica.com forward slash Fisher Technic hyphen education. And of course, either of the two email addresses can be used. If you have general inquiries about Fisher Technic or anything that we offer here at Studica, you can email us at info, info at studica.com. Again, if you have any questions for me uh, about anything I discussed, uh, didn't touch on, that you missed, anything Fisher Technic related, please email me directly, Lance Z, L-A-N-C-E-Z at studica.com. On that note, I'd like to thank you all very much for attending. Have a great afternoon.